Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lunchtime Detroit Lions Talk. It's brought to you by the Detroit Lions on the Prowl and the Belly Up Sports Network. Today, we're going to look at a few things that uh, we're looking forward to for the Detroit Lions mini camp. So, but before, before we get into all that, let me kick it to my main man, the man of steel himself, Kurt Steele. What up, though? Welcome to the show, people. You know who we are. We are Detroit Lions on the Prowl, your home. For Detroit Lions news and rumors. And as always, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Join the family because we don't have fans. We don't have viewers. We have family. And it's all love right here on Detroit Lions on the Prowl. Welcome to the premiere. If you can't catch it at 11 a.m., Devil Back, baby. It's available anytime after the premiere airs. Now let's keep kicking to the new man of the crew, Anthony, right or wrong. What's up, everybody? It is your Detroit Lions fan of the year, the number one Lions fan out here on the platform. We are ready to talk some Lions football today. It's about to be a fantastic show, but before we get into it, got to send it over to Mike Jones. Coach Jones. Who is Coach Mike Jones? What's going on, Lions fans? Let's get this thing started right now. Let's go. It's Detroit Lions talk, baby. We're going to get up, and on the way up, we're going to bite a kneecap off. Yes, sir. We in the deep. All right, welcome back. We got five things to watch from Detroit Lions minicamp. Kurt, tell us what we need to be looking at, man. All right, so according to Mr. Tim Tuneman himself, you know who he is of DetroitLions.com, there are five really big things that the Lions should be looking for as fans uh, when they uh, minicamp coming up. So first of all is increase – Competition, you know, Dan Campbell and those guys have preached that competition, 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 even if it's just having fun, the individual drills. But now you're going to have some more seven on seven, some more contact drills. So, you know, you're going to have some increased competition. The next thing is cornerback rotation. Ooh, now, we have talked about this over a while. You know, there's two young fellas are you know, penciled in as, as starters with Okuda and Amara Royer, but you got Quentin Dunbar, you got Corn Elder, you got Iffy, you got Mike Ford, and you got just a ton of guys back there in the defensive back room for Arby Pleasant and Aaron Grinnell to play around with for the cornerback rotation. So we'll see who comes out. And then the next one is the wide receiver emergence. Now, you know, this has been rated probably the most problematic uh, position for the Lions from national media and to our own fan base. You know, they're like, who in the hell is going to catch passes? So we're going to see who's going to, you know, <laughs> who's going to, you know, emerge as the number one receiver for the Lions. You know, will it be Quintez Cephas? Will it be uh, Amon Ross St. Brown? Who knows right now? But that's a thing to look forward to in this camp. Who's going to step out and emerge as the leader of the pack for that wide receiver room? And then next up, we have some linebacker play. Now, whew, uh, we got Tavai, who, you know, Mr. Uh, Slim Slow himself dropped all that weight. You know what I'm saying? He was taking that diuretics. I don't know what he was doing, man. He took a cleanse or something. He got that weight up off him. You know what I'm saying? So uh, he, he's down. You got Demley Jamie Collins, who's coming back from the birth of his child. You know, congratulations to him. And then, of course, then you have the outside guy. So who knows are playing outside? You know, Romeo Aquara, Julian Aquara, you know, the, you know, those guys out there doing their thing at Trey Flowers. So you got those outside linebackers, you know, and along with Anzalone, who's definitely looking like Thor himself with his, all that long gold mane just flowing. So what are you going to do when he gets on the field? And then the last but not least, you know who the man is, you know, number 16. How is he going to progress in this camp? Can he make all the throws? Can he put the ball where it needs to be? His progression in the office is going to be key of making this thing go. So looking at all those things, Jim, what do you think is really, what are you looking for the most important out of those five things where you're going to really key in on these, uh, to what to watch in the mini camp? Well, I think, honestly, I think it's a safety position. I don't know if that was mentioned, but I think that's the biggest thing that we need to worry about. Number two, we were talking about the uh, wide receivers. Wide receiver number one, TJ Hawkinson. Uh, wide receiver number two, DeAndre Swift. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I think there's going to be some of that. I, uh, mm -hmm. Tyrell Williams, he's healthy right now. We'll see if that mm -hmm. continues. And 
Bashad Perryman has a trouble with uh, the, the dropsy, so we'll see if that if they can cure that in him. That's going to be a big thing, though. But Jared Goff establishing himself as you know the go-to guy, uh, all all his passes being crisp, being right on. I think we really need that for this season to have him be solidified. So I'm looking forward to that, and I'm looking forward to looking at the big fellow Panay Sewell in this whole thing too. And that's another thing I'm looking for in the mini camps. Yeah. Um... I'm looking. I'm looking more for mini camp. Uh, who is gonna be our safety, man? Um, that that worries <laughs> me. That worries me a lot. When I so when I was listening to Jeff Ritson, uh, that worries me a lot. So, so Mike yeah. has a five A. <laughs> it's a lot along right. with Jim. And five A is yep, the safety eight. position. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, every you know everything else I feel in, in the mini camp will situate so. Um, you know, like I said, it, it's early. It's, it's the early part of June. Um, so things that that we can keep an eye on, you know, as you keep an eye on, but just let just let it sit, you know, kind of sell itself out, man. And um, everything will be good. Yeah, I mean, I think that, like Jim said, I think one of the biggest things is just going to be the quarterback play. Obviously, Jared Goff coming in, being the new quarterback in the new system. We've never seen him in Detroit. Obviously, we've not seen the Detroit Lions without Matthew Stafford for a long time. So how's that going to play out? And, you know, I think Jared Goff's his success this year, or how well he's going to play is going to dictate how well this Lions team is going to be this season. Uh, you know, and I and with that being said, I don't think Jared Goff has to be the superhero. I don't think Jared Goff has to throw 30, 40 passes a game for 300 yards and three touchdowns every week. For me, at least what I'm hoping is Jared Goff just is a game manager, right? Jared Goff gets 18 to 25 passes a week, you know, has a 70 plus percent completion percentage, doesn't throw turnovers, gets a touchdown or two every week. If he can do that, just play efficiently, play smart and, you know, keep the ball for the Detroit Lions, keep it on or keep the ball for their offense, they're going to be fine. They have the pieces. They have an offensive line that, you know, is a question mark a little bit just because we don't know exactly how it's going to look. Um, you know, it's a little new with Penae Sewell and, you know, the right guard. So, you know, hope, you know, we're really hoping that's going to be a great unit. Uh, we're expecting that to be a great unit. You know, you look at DeAndre Swift, we know how good he can be. So the Lions have pieces to be successful. I just think it's really going to come down to can Jared Goff play at an, an efficient enough level and play efficient enough to just keep this Lions offense on track, keep it on pace, don't go backwards, and of course, don't turn the ball over. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely true. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Let's let's look at the Detroit Lions on the prowl trivia for today. And here's the question, guys. It's not an easy one. How many tied games do the Lions have in their franchise history? How many games what? have we tied in our whole franchise history? What? I know, Mike. Mike, you got an <laughs> answer. You piped up right Mike away. Easily pull out to the highway, <laughs> so go ahead. No, nah, <laughs> no. Nah. I mean, I just, I was like, man, that's so that's so ridiculous, Jim. Um. I didn't come up with this. You know, I know, that, right? I know, I know. Oh, okay. Um, man, maybe four. Nope, that is not correct. Anybody else got a guess? I go three. Yep, it's close. I've oh. seen it's... two. I know for a fact that I've seen two. Well, it's three, but you had thirty. It's thirty-three. Is 33. the answer? I... Wow! What the Damn. You know what? Though you got to remember, though, back in the day, the games would just end in ties. Yep. You know, there wasn't yeah. an overtime. There wasn't oh, it just yeah. game with just yeah. you know, just ending the okay. time. I, 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 would be, I would be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of them was zero zero. <laughs> yeah, right. but it, right. I thought the same thing. I had a really low number too because all I could remember was a few, and I'm like, well, there had to be some before, so I gave it like four. But then I forgot about the fact that they didn't have overtime a long time ago, so right. a lot in of games were in the time. Oh, yeah. That's the, that's the love the helmet time. days. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's the real knocking. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? They you yeah. know let the helmet, you know what I'm saying? So that's way back. But so we hey. only have one winner today, and that was on Facebook. And the winner today is he Steven that crap, man. He Googled that crap. Silver. Man. That's Thorn. Steve King. That's so, so uh, yeah, Steve there's no I mean Good you Google, know what? Brother, that's <laughs> that could be he could be just really, really, really smart, or Google is his friend. I'm not really sure which yeah, on this I don't one, know but about that, bro. Steven Silverthorne. Is our Unless winner he's just a today. really old guy. He's, you know, yeah. he <laughs> he's a hundred years old, you know. <laughs> he all right. All those. Uh, next up, Mike, with your news and rumors topic. What do you got for us, Mike? Man, uh, who will be our backup quarterback? Uh, I know, you know, a lot of people were were uh, shocked at Boyle signing. Um, 
A lot of people still uh, favor David Blau. Um, right now, uh, coming from Jeff Ritson on our Detroit Lions podcast, David Blau obviously is leaps and bounds ahead of Tim Boyle. Um, but I just still don't think it, the job is safe for David Blau. Uh, I think I think one of them will get released before the preseason game, the first preseason game. And I think it will be a competition. I I don't think that David Blau's job is secure either. I, I do believe, honestly, in my heart, that both of those guys will be gone wow. uh, by the last preseason game and a new quarterback will be brought in and will be the backup. Because one thing that we always had in Detroit in the Stafford era was a lack of backup quarterback play. Every hmm. quarterback that backed up Matt Stafford was not – a good quality guy. And I think that's going to be very important. Uh, I'm not Sean you know, Hill, man. I'm not Sean no. Hill, man. Chase Daniel, Daniel. I'm not Sean Hill. I'm just I'm not Sean Hill. I'm Sean Hill. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. but, you know, you, you got you to gotta think, you know, when you go into a new regime, new era, build a new team, at least mm-hmm. the one thing that has to be stable is the quarterback room. So um, I don't know if David Blau is going to bring that stability to the QB room. He does have a few games of experience. He did look pretty good in those games, but that was in that Matty P system. So I don't, I don't know really, you know, that's credible. So, you know, you that's, that's my take point. on that. You bring up such a good point because Matthew Stafford was the Iron Man, man. We didn't really yeah, expect yeah, him to go out. We didn't need a second quarterback for the most part because we knew if, if he went down, our season was over anyway. <laughs> so which <laughs> – Jared Goff, we well, don't know his durability. Well, uh, uh, nah, 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 nah. I know Jared Goff's durability. Jared Goff has missed one start. One wow. start. Because he had the thumb surgery yep. and came back and played in the playoff game. Well, he's, let's, he's, hope, he's, let's hope we get Iron Man himself. Just as tough. Yeah, that game, would be great. That would be game. great. Once, since he was a starter in LA, he missed one game due to injury. And that's when he that he had the thumb injury, had the surgery, didn't uh set up that one game. What's the little dude's name? I don't know what his name. Uh, pocket size QB. Uh, play it. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Season. <laughs> played the regular season finale, and then uh, many, uh, many. golf was back because the guy went out and golf finished and beat Seattle. So golf the Iron Man too, but uh, right. I don't have the do. You, I don't, it's, but it's not the same because he's not Stafford because we like <laughs> that Stafford. <laughs> it's, it's right. just, you know, uh, we've been Staffordized over here. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll see how that goes. All right, let's go over to the Wall of Fame. And who do you got today, Kurt? We got another change today. Man, we got so much changes to the Wall of Fame. You know what? We're really loving this. But you know, we have our bronze members. We have Detroit Drew, Mint West Lion, Bubble Bo, John Kapler, Detroit Lions Talk with Micro Mike. What up, Mike? Sub Z Trap City Boys Entertainment. Boy, I can put out some good albums. All right, Art Allen, <laughs> uh, Jimbo G. Tornado, uh, Steve Wiley, Steve, excuse me, Crystal Wiley, Steve Castillo, Brian Stover, Bo Garakis, Justin Tenkate, like the beer, of course. And, you know, we have the Latino Lion, you know, rounding out our bronze members. Silver members, we have Nomus J, Jason Portis, Cap Ice Cold, Batman of the 313, and an upgrade from bronze to silver for Mr. John Martin himself. And go. Lions. For our silver, uh, excuse me, for our gold members, we have Bob Corso, friend of the show, North and Ken himself, just in the D, Larry McQuiston, Turner C. Burley, great friend of the show, Michael Huck. Then we have Matthew Ferguson, Randall Flag 606, Miles Gibbs, Randy Prince, the Gridiron Blitz, and you know who it is, the doctor, Dr. Detroit. Is always, always in. in. For more information about becoming a member of the Wall of Fame, click the Join Now button in the description or the Lions on the Prowl logo at the bottom of the screen. I'm really excited about my news and rumors topic today. The Detroit Lions have the sixth rated offensive line. This is according to FTN Fantasy. Uh, what's interesting in this is the number one is Cleveland Browns and uh, two New England Patriots. Three Tampa Bay Buccaneers, fourth Green Bay Packers, fifth Kansas City Chiefs, and six Detroit Lions. Mm-hmm. Uh, the top five are winners in this league. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, but yeah. for us 
to be number six overall and we haven't even played yet mm -hmm. oh my goodness that's really yeah. really really good and it, yeah. it's very exciting for detroit because of the running game because of keeping jared goff upright um teams with offensive lines that are ranked in the top five they go to the playoffs you know, usually over and over and over again. So mm -hmm. us addressing that offensive line and get, instead of getting that uh, shiny object, as I called it before, mm -hmm. man, this is a lot better mm -hmm. because then now you're now you can go get some of them shiny objects and stuff once you've completed that offensive line. I think we still have a question on Big V at right guard, but we'll see if he if he can step up and and take that challenge and be the mauler that he used to be. Hope that foot injury is is healed up and. Uh, he's good to go but having the six ranked offensive line that's just amazing to me it really really is yeah um that's even great. pro football farce has us at number 10 um i mean pff i'm sorry no uh, PFF, pff hates PFF. us though pro football farce has, has us at 10 pro football farce uh, has it yeah has us at 10 so at 10. um but, but it's the top 10 so I, I ain't mad. Right. I, I, I can't be uh, mad at it. And then, uh, right. uh, especially with the question marks that we have with the big V and then, you know, the right guard position, not really, really being solidified. So, and then, you know, the rotational basis, you know, so I get it, you know. Right. And then if you look at the rest of that list too, like Jim mentioned the top five, number seven, right behind Detroit is Indianapolis who won their mm. division or was you know, yeah. a 10, 11 when playoff really team. Nelson. Number eight was the New Orleans Saints, who won their division. Number nine is the Washington football team, who won their division. Number okay, well, 10 that's is the Francisco. NFC lease, so I don't know well, about that. <laughs> yeah, well, I, mean, the point, I think stands that, you know, good <laughs> offensive lines equal mm -hmm. good football teams. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I'm, went the I'm, just right direction. Make, I'm just trying to make sure this hopium is uh, flowing through my veins. That's <laughs> why <laughs> <laughs> so I keep just just keep making sure that this hopium I, vein I'm is. I'm not it, messing it, with you. <laughs> I am not messing with you. Nope. I'm just, I'm not Mike Jones. Mike, Mike Jones. 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 Is killing what happened to you, Mike Jones? <laughs> <laughs> we got the hopium flowing. Yeah, I love right. it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now we're going to go to okay. Kurt for his news and rumor today. What do you got okay. for us, Kurt? All right. So we had a signing yesterday. Uh, it wasn't who we thought it was. It definitely was not Ty Gurley. Uh, definitely, but Monday afternoon, the Lions had two empty roster spots, and they filled one of them with uh, outside linebacker Reggie Gilbert. Now, Gilbert's a five-year veteran. He's coming over uh, from the Tennessee Titans, started his career with – yeah, you know, the boogeyman up there in Green Bay. Uh, he had 18 appearances, totaling 29 tackles and three and a half sacks. Uh, 2019, he got traded uh, for a seventh-round pick to go play in Tennessee. Uh, played 11 games down there, started five of them, picked up 20 tackles and, and a sack. Um, this is one of those guys where, you know, I think it's a really adept signing. He's got an outside chance to make the roster, but uh, – you know, the outside that was one of those things that we had to look for in minicamp was linebacker play. And yep. they may not be settled in what the you know or happy with the guys that they're seeing right now on the roster. So they bring in another guy. Um, but I mean, we'll see if he makes the roster. But you know, it's just a you know, this really a a um housekeeping note that you know we, we did sign uh Mr. Gilbert yesterday. And then earlier the week, we hadn't really mentioned it. We signed that uh, it was like later in the week last week over the weekend was uh Michael Warren, the running back that the we signed back. out of the University of Cincinnati. So um that was one of those guys with the um with the injury settlement release of um the the young man from um was that Raheem Boy out of uh, the last chance you guy that we was hoping to make the roster. So he got injured and they released some weird injury. That's why we didn't see him out there in the field. So there's some housekeeping notes for Kurt Steele on his news and rumors today. <laughs> One thing about him though, he's more that defensive end type linebacker rather yeah. than you know the middle linebacker. He's more one of that outside linebacker in our uh, in our defense. Just wanted to make sure we knew that. Let's go to the comment card. It's my favorite part of the show, actually. Besides the dessert with Kurt, now that's my favorite. But anyway, <laughs> I do love to hear what you guys say and and what you guys have to say about the show. Lord Sir James, Dan is pulling all the attention to him, deflecting the rebuild season to play out without the microscope of the media. This is a really good point. This is a point I honestly I hadn't thought of before, but he's trying to he's trying to take all the attention on him so nobody will look at this awful team. I mean, um, this 
<laughs> no, I'm I'm kidding, but I I'm one of those guys. I don't have the opium right now. I I I've got us at five, and I got five to seven wins on this team, uh, unless they make some major improvements. And I don't I don't think they're going to do that. But it is yeah. it is a build season, and and we'll see because next year, look at all the draft picks we had. Like I said, there's so much reason to hope. It just isn't this year. But Dan is pulling all the attention on him. That makes so much sense to me. Sounds like something he would do too. Yeah, definitely MCDC. All right, speaking of MCDC, Paul Tompkins says, I see Dan Campbell has taken a whole organizational approach, someone who can stand back and self-assess on what's going right and what's going wrong. I understand that. And I think, to be honest with you, I really think that he's he's trying to make up for the flaws that he had definitely when he was the interim coach down in Miami as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Dan Campbell, a guy that just I feel like part of that's just his personality, though. Like, yeah, I feel like just, even if the lines were silly, good, he'd be part good. of it is. Yeah, I think. Right. So. Uh, John John Martin says, I think it's less about collaboration and more about a shared vision. Good two way communication and a focus on results. I hope it works. I hope it works for I'm tired of the tyrant or young, young genius model of head coaching. But in the end, talent usually wins when it is about a tra- Then it's about attracting talent with a shared. So I, I think there's more to that comment because it's just a dot, dot, dot after. Yeah, but, um, he didn't he didn't write anymore. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he is. Um, but I, I, I think this is kind of an interesting point, too, because, you know, he talks about the shared vision being a big thing, um, you know, and the way Dan Campbell talks, he talks about, you know, everybody being able to work together, everybody being able to kind of bond as a coaching staff. He said, like, if you have two alphas in a room, they're just going to, you know, bite each other's heads off until nobody gets anything done. Um, so that comment kind of speaks to that shared vision. You know, everybody this year seemingly has the same goal they're working towards the same thing and they kind of understand their role in in i guess building up to that kind of they all understand their role in getting to that shared vision um and then he talks about you know being tired of that tyrant or the young genius uh you know so to speak and i'm i'm 100 with them you know matt patricia kind of going back to that shared vision matt patricia at least you know from the outside kind of seemed like it was a you know I'm the best. I'm, you know, the big bad Matt Patricia. I won the Super Bowl. I had, you know, put Malcolm Butler in and had his interception, which is, you know, not, I don't even think is really on Matt Patricia, but, you know, I, you know, whatever. It's not. Um, That's just absolute luck. But, you know, regardless, he's, you know, it's me, me, me. I'm the best. I'm the head coach. It's my way or the highway. And that, that doesn't work outside of New England. You know, that's why Bill O'Brien failed. That's why, you know, all these other coaches that, you know, all these other New England disciples fail because they try to be Bill Belichick. They try to implement that system and they try to be that tyrant that rules with an iron fist. And it simply doesn't work because, you know, I think the biggest part of Bill Belichick's system and why it works is because he's winning. The Patriots won Super Bowls. The Patriots win games. So how, as a player, are you going to sit there and complain when you're winning Super Bowls and getting rings? Um, you know, and then he talks about in the end, talent usually wins, which I think is, is true to a point. I, you know, obviously every NFL team has talent. You wouldn't be in the NFL if you didn't have talent. Um, but you know, like you said, at the end of the day, it's about bringing in more talent, bringing in the best guys available and the best guys that fit. So, you know, I think he's, he's hit on a couple of really good points there. Right on, right on. Brandon by often. Is that how you say that? You know we butcher names over here. Could be block, um, blocked, 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 in. blocked in. Okay, that's not, okay. My bad. The glare is in my okay. Too many lights. Okay, uh, <laughs> I think the Lions coaching staff will work. Will Will there be a lot of disagreements among the coaching staff? Yes, but they played the game, so they know. So they will know how to come together as a team for the team for the Lions haters. We blocking with <laughs> we blocking with the Kurt Steel Wood. Uh, no still, saying. The, what, what up, up do? <laughs> oh, what okay. Up, I can't. Do? I can't. Okay. Oh, okay. I see. What up, though? Yeah, yeah. Love the show. Yeah. <laughs> what up, though? <laughs> I hate. Oh man, that's the, the emoji talking, man. <laughs> yeah, don't talk an emoji because Mike can't read that. Now, come on, man. That's ridiculous. Come on, man. We didn't say it before. It's not a puzzle. 
I'm just kidding. Yeah. We're messing with you. Harpazo Smash Snatch or Harpazo Smash, something like that. Snatch. We butcher names here. That's exactly what we do. what we do. The key word is vision. I took classes at ORU, and one of the things I learned is that you have to have a vision and sell it to the rest of the team and the head office. You always put people who are smarter than you and listen to them. If Dan Campbell know, thinks he knows everything, there will be a problem. I don't think he does because it's Dan he Campbell. Knows. <laughs> he knows he doesn't know everything. <laughs> However, I don't see him the way that way, neither do I, from what I've mm. seen. Everyone mm. seems to be on board. We will see when the rubber meets the road. As far as running the rock, give the rock to our boys and let them roll. Great job, guys. Well, thank you, sir. But yeah, we really appreciate that comment. But yeah, it's vision. It is. It's, it's what you see for this team. And Dan Campbell had a vision and he's supported himself with people smarter than him, which is what Henry Ford used to do way back in the day. And that's what you have to do if you want to be successful. I don't think Dan Campbell's an egomaniac. I just think he likes to have a lot of fun. That's about it for me. Yeah, <laughs> just a good yeah. ball. He doesn't take himself way in his he don't take himself seriously at all. You know, he's he knows he he knows what he knows and he can be serious, but you know, he's just not overly critical of himself. You know, he's just who he is. All right, you know who it is, the law firm, baby, Joseph Murdoch and Associates, Esquire, and all that good stuff. Uh, it's a collaboration of people putting the best effort at trying to have everyone on the same page being a team. And then with the thinking emoji. Yeah. No emoji. No, I'm kidding. Nice thought. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so Doug Prince seventy two says coaches will get into spats, but as Kurt as the question, will the coaches know when to step back? I propose the question to the media and fans since we haven't played a game yet. In quotations, can you allow them to try? Funny question, right? Well, the media and fans stop uh, destructing this team before the games been played won or lost even consider how much the media integrate drama for the story like pre-draft stories with no factor source and this is a point that i've touched on a couple of times as well as like everybody seemingly hates what the lions are building already it seems like everybody's already given up on dan campbell and the national media um and i'll talk about this in my news and rumors thing but like you know you have like joy taylor you have colin cowherd you have you know all these people being like oh he's too silly oh he can't be serious oh this and that that's why he's not gonna be yeah i mean absolute garbage right there but um you know they have all these things and it's like they're giving reason after reason after reason why dan campbell is not gonna work or why you know the lions aren't gonna do whatever in the next couple of years and why they won't be good for a long time and it's the preseason hasn't even began yet we're not even to mini camp. We're not even to training camp yet. And everybody's already like hating on this coaching staff and hating on Dan Campbell. And at the end of the day, nobody knows until they hit the field. Nobody knows until week one rolls around how good this team is going to be, whether you think they're going to be good, whether you think they're going to be bad, whether you think they're going to be average. No, nobody knows until week one hits. Nobody knows until, you know, they play their first game and so they, you know, get their first real live snaps of a football game. And so those players really test themselves for 60 minutes on week one. Nobody knows how good this team is going to be. So I think Doug Prince 72 brings up a great point is like, just let them play, let, let the vision play out. And once you see them on the field, once you see how good they actually are versus how good you think they're going to be or how bad you think they're going to be, then make your assessment, then voice your opinion. And then you can actually have some source and material behind what you're saying. All right. Right on. Hey, that's 100 right there. <laughs> uh, Mike and Chris G, please don't give any credence to the mainstream media. Come on, guys. That's our <laughs> motto. Detroit versus everybody. The staff is so unbe the staff is, is unbelievable. So many top-notch coaches and players. They were pretty darn good. And they were. So hey, we just let it all play out, man. I'm, I'm sure they, they know what they're doing, man. Yeah, you know I, what's I'm funny about, about that? It. They loved Matt Patricia, though. <laughs> they absolutely adored Matt Patricia. Thought that was the best signing Detroit had ever made. How'd that work out? Now they're going the opposite way. So I'm really <laughs> happy that they are because <laughs> they don't know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, we're going to go to uh, right or wrong with his uh, news and rumor topic for today. Yeah. So when we were doing the comments, you know, I talked about how this net, the national media had kind of 
I guess, got this idea that Dan Campbell is, you know, too silly, having too much fun for the job. And, you know, because of his comments or things that he's done in press conferences and stuff like that, that he can't be good. Right. You know, you have Joy Taylor and Colin Coward the other day saying that, you know, when uh, when Dan Campbell wore, you know, his racing helmet into the press conference, they were like, oh, Belichick would not have done that, which, you know. To counter that, yeah, we had a guy that wouldn't have done that, and he got 19 wins in three seasons or whatever it was. Not very good. Um, and then you have, like, Mike Valenti saying Campbell's a cartoon. You have a lot of other media sources saying, like, Dan Campbell can't do his job. Uh, the internet pretty much exploded when Dan Campbell was talking about biting kneecaps. And, you know, even that comment he took back, and he's like, you know, I didn't mean it to come out quite that violent or aggressive or whatever um i love it i think the energy was great but you know the whole national media pretty much imploded when dan campbell mentioned a kneecap um you know and it's really just the comments and the things that he does that are kind of making people in the national media i guess kind of step back and be like oh that's you know that's not that's not the guy you want leading your football team and you know so that i think a lot of people are overlooking what dan campbell's actually done within the lions organization you know, we talked about the last comment of the day, uh, you know, that we just talked about mentioned this coaching staff. I don't think people realize how good of a coaching staff Dan Campbell's putting together. Uh, I mean, you look at Aaron Glenn, one of the top secondary coaches a season ago and one of the top defensive coordinator candidates this year, you know, passed over Chicago for us. You have Aubrey Pleasant, one of the top, you know, top defensive backs coaches in the NFL came to us over staying with LA came to us over a bunch of other places that he had opportunity. You have Deuce Staley, one of the top running back coaches in the NFL came to Detroit. You have Mark DeLome, one of the better linebacker coaches that we stole from a division rival came to Detroit instead of staying in Chicago or going elsewhere. We had ample opportunity. You have Todd Wash, the former Jacksonville defensive line coach who developed guys like Josh Allen and worked with Calais Campbell and worked with, you know, really developed and was in charge of that Saxonville defense a couple of years ago. You know, we kept our O-line coach who's one of the best in the NFL when he had plenty of opportunity to go everywhere else that he wanted to go and had opportunity to go to a contender. So, you know, if Dan Campbell is really this super silly guy that can't get anything done, that can't be serious, that can't, you know, do his job right, why are all of these top coaches coming to Detroit? Why are all of these people buying in? Why do we have 85 of our 90-man roster in attendance for OTAs when they don't need to be there? Like, I just think the national media is taking everything everything they can find about, about Dan Campbell, and they're just – they're throwing everything out because, you know, I guess eventually something has to stick, right? Like that's their philosophy. Like if they throw enough at Dan Campbell, something's going to be right. Eventually he's the lions coach. He's going to get hate. And especially with such the big turnaround for Matt Patricia, such the drastic change, you know, it's definitely very different. It's definitely, you know, a little bit of whiplash possibly for the national media, but you know, just because Dan Campbell's having fun, just because he's playing cornerback at minicamp, just because he's, you know, having some fun, wearing a racing helmet to promote a Detroit event. He's commenting about biting kneecaps or whatever he's got to do. Like, th- everybody looks at that and I think overlooked all the good he's actually done for the Detroit Lions in his sh- in his relatively short time as the head coach. Yeah, I totally agree yeah, with that. that. That's an amazing take on that, too. Yeah. Uh, Got to go to the question of the day today. The question of the day is really simple. What are you looking for at Detroit Lions minicamp? What things are you going to be looking at, wanting to know more about? Let us know in the comment section below. And now we go to my favorite part of the show, the dessert with my man, Kurt. Well, it should be obvious what the dessert with Kurt is about today. It's about our new member of the team. Welcome him in. Right or wrong, he was the Detroit Lions fans of the year. If you don't know who he is, look up the draft on the second day. He was the guy that now it's in the draft pick for the Lions in Cleveland. That's who that guy on the screen is. He is a very talented young man. He's a content creator himself. He has his own channel. Go over there and check it out. But welcome to the team, Mr. Anthony. Right or wrong. And congratulations on graduating high school this recently, young fella. Great job. We're really proud of you, and we really uh, appreciate you joining the team right here for Detroit Lions on the Prowl. Yeah, kind of my final thoughts stole my thunder there a little bit. Uh, right or wrong, <laughs> welcome to the team. Uh, he also has his own thing, right or wrong. You got to check him out. Go sub to his YouTube channel, man. Got good content and, and, and puts a lot into his stuff. He really does. 
you know, but congratulations on graduation and being the fan of the year and all the things that you do and bring to the table here at Detroit Lions on the Prowl as well. Also, uh, don't forget tomorrow is the gold members Zoom call. That is at 3 p.m. tomorrow. And then, of course, free for all Friday. You never know who's going to show up. And right now, I don't even know. So <laughs> it's a surprise to me, too. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, that's that's my uh, final thoughts for today. What do you got? Final thoughts today, uh, right or wrong? I mean, hey, fantastic show. I had a lot of fun today. Obviously, first video here with you guys. First time here talking some Detroit Lions. I, I had a lot of fun, man. This was really, really fun. Got up a little early today, which was not the best. But uh, <laughs> uh, in the end, it was definitely worth it. Um, I'm excited to be back many, many times. I enjoy talking Lions football. Uh, and just overall, thank you guys for letting me be on. Thank you guys for you know being welcoming, being open to allowing me to join. And, uh, and I'll definitely be back. Definitely look to be back as often as I can. Hey, um, I have a little, a little different, uh, uh, you know, um, the signing of Reggie Gilbert was really surprising to me. Uh, you know, just because I, you know, was thinking that we were kind of overloaded at the outside linebacker position from, you know, a lot of defensive ends. So, uh, that that are switching. So I just want to say keep an eye out on that situation. Um, maybe Trey Flowers might not be that guy that we think he is in open space. Or I, I don't think we think. I think that they thought he was. Uh, we know that he's not that good in open space. So uh, I just, you know, keep your eyes on it. And uh, today is day two of minicamp, people. Yesterday, yesterday, I, I got to say, kind of flew by. It flew by. I'm not going to lie. It was, you know, and then all of a sudden I was like, why? It's six o'clock. So, um, yeah, yeah, we, we get into it, man. Yeah. Tell, right, so. tell them mini camp for who, though? <laughs> mini camp oh. for who? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Jackson Northwest Mounties, there man. You uh, go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We getting it in, man. Yeah, definitely. All right. My final thoughts on the day are, man, mini camp is finally here. We've talked about this for weeks. Uh, the, uh, off-season program for the Lions is in full swing, and I'm just happy to see that they're going to be strapping it up, putting some pads on, doing some light contact. You know, it's probably going to be shoulder pads and shorts. You know, it probably won't be nothing big, but, you know, they'll go out there and do some more competitive stuff. And they had – the Lions had their media day yesterday, so they were making some silly videos and taking pictures and all this stuff like that. So go over to the Lions' Instagram account uh, or their Twitter account and check it out, man. They, they just had some fun, so – uh, it's good to see those guys in uniform doing their thing. Um, but as always, you know who we are. We are Detroit Lions on the Prowl, your home for Detroit Lions news and rumors. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Join the family. We don't have fans. We don't have viewers. We have family. And it's all love right here on Detroit Lions on the Prowl. And if you want to get some great gear, go over to fanatics.com. Kurt just scored him a nice, sweet little hat. And I use my fan cash rewards program to get a big discount on this thing right there. So go over there to fanatics.com. The link's in the description. The uh, excuse me, proceeds from that link, a small portion of them, go to help us grow the content on this channel. And you can go over and check us out on bellyupsports.com. Hey, they got some great content over there. The NBA playoffs and NHL playoffs are in full swing. And they got some great coverage over there on bellyupsports.com. You know what day it is. It's two-piece Tuesday. It's Taco Tuesday. Whatever you have for lunch today, go ahead, wrap it up, finish your pop, finish your soda, get back to work, and... Whatever you do in life, you know what you got to do, baby. You got to boss up, ball out, and be the best version of you that you can be. For the fellas on the panel, this is Kurt Steele, and we will holler at you real soon.